Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a new week and a new month uh, and springtime. They say it's yeah. In the, well, in the southern hemisphere, we're having springtime. It looked a lot more springtime in the week. Uh, today seems a bit more cloudy in Johannesburg on the south side for us. Uh, but I hope you all had an awesome week and uh, that you're looking forward to being a part of the service this morning. We have people that are already uh, signed on with us at Zoom. Uh, if those of you that are here and you'd like to switch on your videos, just to say hello, a greeting of hello, because that's what, what we would normally do uh, in, in greeting with one another. Please greet. You're welcome to. Yeah, yes, they say that's morning. the greeting now for, for onlineers. I can see you guys are professionals. <laughs> Uh, bless you and, and thank you for being a part of the service this morning. We also have people that will be signing in from Facebook Live. Um, and yes, we continue to be in a level three adjusted lockdown uh, in South Africa. Uh, and Via Christi Community Church remains uh, in an online service. Uh, we will keep you briefed when we, when we rethink that. But for now, it, as an act of love and not a lack of trust, we continue in this way. For those of you that are interested, we have this service where we do it online via Zoom and Facebook Live. Then we also send our service onto a YouTube channel uh, that we send the links out. And we also turn our service into an audio file. So for people who do not have access or are not used to the technology, they, they have three ways to connect with the service. And for those of you that are out there, on Thursdays, most of the weeks coming as, as it becomes a bit warmer, Marisha and I are spending uh, the morning at the church. So if you are willing and would like to connect in the garden, uh, especially those of you that are not at work and maybe in and around the community of Lanesia, you're welcome to join us in the garden at the church uh, on Thursdays. Well, depending on which day of the week, but we will be there. Yes, so God bless you all. And as we start the service out this morning, we have... Uh, um, a brother that I've known for many years, and I'm so blessed to serve with him at the church and also excited to experience worship together with uh, this brother of ours, Jonathan Abrams. Over to Jonathan. Good morning, Seth and Marisha. Good morning, church. Good morning, I hope, you are, I hope you all are blessed this morning. We know that there are families in our church uh, who are still facing grief to this morning. Um, with, with death in the family and we have, our thoughts and prayers are with all of you. Um, today I chose a verse as the opening verse uh, for the service. It's about, it's called Two Blind, Two Blind Men Receive Sight and it's from Matthew 21. Uh, Matthew 21 verse 29. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately, they received their sight and followed him. The reason I chose this verse today is because we live in a world with numerous competing ideologies and ideas about where our help and where our peace and our life and our salvation can come from. Um, and these things can do more harm and confuse us and take us further away from the actual source of our hope, which is God himself. And this uh, verse, this verse in, the, in this chapter, um, simply reminds us that we should hold fast onto Jesus and seek him out. In the midst of all the competing thoughts, we should hold fast and cry out louder to him and cry out to him because he does come to us and he is a friend 
and you will reach out to us and you will grant us compassion. And his ears are always listening to us as a friend uh, would do so. Um, and as we remember that, um, let us not also worry about what the world tries to, how they try to sway us and tell us, no, well, we should follow this way or that way. But let's, let's cry out louder to, to Jesus and um, let's remember that in the service and let's open the service with a prayer. So we can all bow our heads and pray now. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are a friend. Thank you that you are a king who is compassionate, a compassionate and loving God who takes, um, who's, who wants to heal us and wants to walk close by us and sees our pain and our hurt and wants to lift us up and bring us to a place of joy and peace. Thank you, Lord, that we can find our joy and peace in you. And may we find our joy and peace in you. May we realize that our joy and peace does not come from any other earthly um, way. Um, and it only comes from seeking you, Lord, uh, because God, you have created us. And therefore, we know that you are the answer to all our um, hearts, longings and desires and issues and our dreams. Lord, and we know that we will have a fulfilled life in you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, in, um, I'm gonna, we're going to sing a song, an opening song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And it's uh, in line with the passage that we just read now. Uh, it reminds us that God is not some uh, being who we cannot talk to directly and converse with directly. He is close to us. He's in our hearts and he wants to hear from us. And he has a, a relationship with us that is in the form of a friendship as well. So let's sing together. Just getting the lyrics. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in We often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. We sing to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? trouble anywhere we should never be despised get to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come with the load of care. Precious Savior still our Despise, forsake you. 
take it to blood in bed. In his arms he'll take and shield you. We'll find a solace there. The next song we're going to sing is called Jesus Be the Center. Jesus, be the center, be my source, be my life, Jesus. Jesus, be the center. Thank you, Jonathan, for beautiful songs. Jesus, be the center, uh, be the wind in my sails. And yes, uh, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we want to we wanna thank the Lord that we can be together this morning. And thank you, John, for opening and leading us so beautifully. Welcome to those that are online. Good to see uh, Danny and Auntie Venice and Moya and... Um, we have a few others that I can see. 
online, Adele, uh, Auntie Shirley. Um, so we're grateful to God for those of you that are signing on and being a part of our community time and our services morning. Um, also, we'd like to say in this time, as we go into focus with community, uh, as we come out of it, we want to take a moment to pray. And so I ask you this morning, please, um, as you reflect, if they are prayer and praise items, and as you know, in good form and shape of the week, we also do this on Wednesdays in a very focused day of prayer, where people step away from wherever they're at and whatever they're doing and find some time to reflect, write down, take some time to think through and pray. And we want to thank the Lord for, for people's testimonies of even when their prayers and what they were praying for didn't go the way that they wanted. Uh, people have shared with us testimonies that they still sense God's mercy and God's grace. But as a community, we want to pray. And so after Marisha has led us through focus with community, by that time, please um, get ready when we all will join together in a time of uh, community prayer. Over to you, Marish. Thank you, John, and thank you, Seth. Uh, I'm going to ask Tadeo to join me this morning, if you can come sit in the middle. There we go. <laughs> thank you, Tadeo. So um, this morning, I'm sure, as many of you know, we kicked off a September month with spring. And... Um, we, we, yes, it wasn't as warm in some places and it wasn't uh, too many blossoms in certain areas. We, we think about the flowers are going to bloom. We had some of it, but also this month is Heritage Month. Uh, now, do we know anything about Heritage Month? Seth, I'm going to ask you to get ready to put that uh, presentation up as uh, Tade and I talk about some stuff about heritage. Any, any thoughts on what you think heritage is? And I'll also ask our community to unmute and maybe share with us at this time. <clears throat> heritage, what, what does it mean? Do you have any thoughts about that, Tadeo? Uh, we studied it at school. It's like something that you follow. Okay, something that you follow, something that's passed on to you in your culture. Uh, Seth, how about you? Anything about heritage? I'm thinking bunny chow. Okay, so it's about the food we eat. Okay, the music. Uh, how about uh, some of the things that we believe? Okay, that's passed on to us from our, our family and generations before. Have we got it? Yes. Okay. Uh, Right, so I'm waiting, just right. So celebrating Heritage Month. Now we normally, uh, hopefully you can all see that, we normally celebrate Heritage Day on the 24th of September. And basically what it is, it's just for our country to recognize and celebrate the cultural wealth of our nation, okay? And we have such a diverse nation, so many different uh, people and uh, ethnicities, and uh, languages. So this is part of our heritage. So it's a living heritage and it's the foundation of all communities, of everybody that lives in, in, our, in our South Africa. And it's also essential for who we are because we can say, oh, I like this uh, to eat this. I like this music. And it kind of reflects on who you are and where you come from. And it's about continuity, what we pass on. So there's different aspects, like Tadeo, can you tell me some of the aspects we talked about already or mentioned? We said there's music, what else? Uh, there's <laughs> dancing. Right, dancing, food. food. We have oral history, languages, uh, rituals, memory, skills and techniques is this is what, uh, what I've got there. And then also indigenous knowledge. Indigenous just means that something that has come from a specific place and time in the country. And then we also have um, uh, social relationships, our approach to nature. So it plays an important role in our community and promoting our cultural diversity also helps us to be together as people. 
and how we live together as people. It also celebrates, uh, allows us to have peace and economic development in our country. So uh, there's many different people who possess this knowledge, okay? So you have some of it, uh, your grandparents have some of it, the people who have come before, uh, and generally the elder folk in our, in our community can tell us lots of stories about this. Now, we wanna celebrate our culture and our heritage because it also allows us to face some of the challenges and address and make changes to some of the challenges that we face today in our community. And what are some of those challenges? The, some of the challenges are, are the unequal um, communities that we live in, where not everybody has access to whether it's education or health or resources. So some of our heritage and culture can help us face those challenges today. And that's why we continue to celebrate it and pass it on. Now, each week this month, we're going to be focusing on different aspects of our culture. And this month, we are going to be uh, focusing on one specific uh, uh, aspect. So I'm going to uh, show you this can. Anybody knows what this can is? It's a beans can. Okay, it's a cool beans can. Uh, how about this? Marbles. Marbles. Okay, so you know what marbles are. Okay, what what are marbles used for? Uh, they balls that you like to just play with. Them okay, how about this? Stones. Stones. Okay, and what do you think all of these are used for? How about this? A stick. A stick. That was in the fire. Okay, so now. If I show you these, do you think like, oh, those are games that I can play? Uh, Not really. Yeah. What are games that you play today? Uh, tag, we play on our phone. Right, you play on your Minecraft, phone. Minecraft, you, you play, play Minecraft. Minecraft. Xbox and PlayStation. Now, uh, not so long ago, and in many, many uh, communities, we still play these games. So I'm gonna ask Pastor Sid to put on that next slide for us. These are some of part of our heritage. Okay, who remember three tins? So please unmute dear community and those on Facebook, please, uh, please uh, put it up. The games that you played as a child or that you continue to play. Now I remember playing this, the Stones game. Do you remember the Stones game? There's a picture of that Stones game. Uh, and it was really where you had to make a hole and put the stones in a hole and then try, a throw. you'll have one stone that you throw up and you grab the rest, um, okay? And then you see a picture of uh, elastics. Oh, I used to love that game, elastics, where there's a long piece of elastics that we used to have two people tie around and then we'd have to jump on it and, and tramp on it. And then marbles is a picture of marbles. Now you know some of the games of marbles, okay? I think some of that is still played. And then we talked about uh, three tins, uh, where you'd have three, uh, the tins, uh, stacked up and then you'd have uh, a ball or something that would you try and knock it over I with said what are the games that you played yeah I, I don't know about the three turns game but we i remember this one playing some ropes but not that we were so good uh with the ropes uh but yeah we made games with the sticks the one thing that we did do with sticks was we had a uh, a little uh, stick on stick, so you'd hit the stick, right. flip it up. And so that's that's stick. actually that game that's up on the left corner, which is called Guliganda or Guliganda. Yeah, which Keniki. I was... Keniki. Called Keniki. <laughs> what was that? Keniki. Okay, so we have different names for it, and uh, actually that that game uh, came from the villages in India. So uh, what are some of the other games? Community church. Uh, family that you played when you were little? Uh, there was a game called Rubab. Yeah, and let me stop the screen share for a while. Let's hear from our people. There was, there was a game called Rubab where you stand in the middle and uh, there are two sides and you throw the ball to the person in the middle. If you, if you get him, you target him and you get him or wherever it is on his body, then he has to move out of the game and somebody else comes into the game. And hopscotch, we used to play hopscotch. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. playing that too and we draw it with, with those stones that you could uh, almost like chalk like stones draw it on yeah, a chalk like yeah. yeah. but let me tell you that we were trying to teach our, our grandchildren our two grandsons 
Blackies. Blackies, Blackies stand still. They're three turns, oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and they found it very, very exciting. Did you guys play <laughs> this game when you were small? And they thoroughly enjoyed it. Good, that's wonderful. How about others this morning? Games that you played or continue to play, maybe with children or grandchildren? Anybody else? Uh, we used to spend hours playing with uh, uh, playing with tops. Yes, uh, a top socks. with string. Yeah, I forget the other game. We used to throw. We used to uh, a group of people. You throw the ball up and you call a person's name, and that person has to come in and uh, you know and catch the ball and then throw somebody up. But I forget the name of of that king. traditional game. I think it was called King Rob. King. It was called King. There you go. Okay. Sankar, you. did you play that game? I just the in front of the the please say that again. <clears throat> no, not me. I'm going to say carom and and seven stones or five stones. Five the one stones. you just throw the five stones and carom. Wow. <clears throat> carom board. Carom board. Okay. And who else? Someone else was mentioning, but I, I think we. Uh, no, 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 no. Nan saying something. Auntie Nan. Nan, Nan, oh, is, saying, Auntie Nan, Nan yes, is saying. Nan? Nan is saying you, uh, Nitz, um, uh, Nitz and Feroz, a good friend of of Nitz and also of mine. They used to, at at college. They used to spend Kenny, uh, play Kenny in front of one of the lecturer's classes and make an absolute racket. <laughs> Okay, so Kenneke, yes, all of these wonderful games. Now, Tadeo, you may not know any of these that we are talking about. <laughs> this is what heritage is about. And uh, they were asking me what are some of the games that I played, and they had no idea that these were some of the games that you may do with a with a turn or a stick. Or a stone, you know, because so I think Malaysia in this coming week we have to play. Yes, so we're going to have to play three turns or or so guliganda less green time or and more guliganda <laughs> and, and more kiniki games. or kaniki. So it's it's a beautiful heritage that we that we have that we need to pass on. And yes, we can continue to have you play on your Xbox or on your phone or some of those games, but. These are games that allow us as a people to learn where we came from, to learn why we played them uh, when we didn't have access to resources. These are the games that was made, uh, made up uh, using what we had. Uh, and I, I see that uh, Danny said five stones was clippies, uh, hopscotch we have, uh, elastic jumping was Auntie Vanessa's game. Uh, they used to make little fires and steal oil and potatoes from mom and fry chips. <laughs> okay, so marbles, uh, Shama says marbles. So all of those beautiful heritage that we have that sometimes we don't have the opportunity to pass on. But today we want to remind you, and this is what it is about celebrating, just in games. And games have a wonderful way of teaching us patience because we have to take turns. Uh, it allows us to, to learn about teamwork and synergy, which just means working together. It also allows us to, uh, to not cheat because, you know, those, and now I know that, <laughs> that uh, Seth uh, used, uh, his, his, his friends and something says, yeah, sometimes they used to cheat. Now, it also allows us to, how do we, when we want to cheat, when we want to just kind of how do we, you know, allow each person to have their turn and not to cheat in a game, unless the game calls for cheating. Now, there are many other wonderful games that we have inherited. Let us continue to pass on that so that we can together learn about patience and taking turns and caring. And so we want to close off this time with this verse that Taideo is going to share with us this morning. And it's actually a verse that he learned and memorized and presented for a competition. And uh, that's a story I'm sure one day he'd love to tell you more about. Uh, but he's going to read this to us this morning. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you'll love many years and your life will be satisfied. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them deep within your heart. 
Then you will find favor with both God and people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek God's will in all you do, and God will show you which path to take. Thank you, Tadeo. Now, this verse is important because it, it starts off saying that we must never forget what we've been taught. Now, games are some of the things that we've been taught, but this verse gives us something more important than the games that have been passed on. It's about the commands of God. And what are those commands of God? Is that loyalty and kindness must always be with us. We must continue to trust in God. And if we do this... Even when we're playing Minecraft. <laughs> and all of the kind. other games. Yes. And all of the other games. And, and when we do this, we'd be, we'd be gaining favor with God and people, which means that people would say, oh, that's my dear friend. And... Uh, Continue to trusting in God, because whenever we, we face a moment that we don't know where to go, God will show us the right way. So thank you, Tadeo. So that's an heritage, learning a memory of us, is an heritage that's been passed on, learning the word of God. And uh, I hope that you were blessed this morning to continue to celebrate our great heritage that, that's been passed on to us. And in a simple way of playing games, in a simple way of learning a memory of us this morning. So never forget the things that uh, we have been taught. Store these commands in our hearts this morning. And thank you to Tadeo for joining us this morning. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, Tadeo. Um, let's continue this morning with this. It's a, uh, the song uh, that we sing with the children, and my children are here around us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct your paths. With all my heart, I will follow after you. With all my strength, I will praise you, O oh Lord, with all, all that you've given me. I will not be led astray with all my heart. I will walk in your way. Amen. So let us continue this time with some community prayer. I think there's some of us that will be able to assist and we'll do this in the next five minutes. Uh, as you reflect, there's some prayer requests that are coming online. I'll begin. And then as you feel led, please join us as we together uh, use our voices uh, and connect in this time of prayer. Let's, let's spend this time together in prayer. Lord Jesus, we approach your throne room of grace and thank you that we are cognizant and aware that you are with us. You are God that is with us. You are our help. We thank you for uh, how Jonathan opened this morning, just reminding us that our help is in you. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be looking in, in, in other sources, uh, in other places for help, but our help comes from you. And, and thank you, Lord, that we're reminded that, that uh, we have a heritage today. We, we have a cultural heritage that is worthy remembering and reflecting on and carrying some of that with us. And when we look back and we remember what the Lord, Lord has done, uh, we can never turn back anymore. Oh, Lord of mercy, hear our prayers. As we direct our prayers to you, Lord, we thank you that you, you anchor with us. So as people around this virtual space uh, may declare some prayers this morning, Lord, together we as a community pray. And I'll invite those of you now that would like to, you're welcome to turn on your cameras or, and unmute your mics and join us, but I'll continue. Lord, we pray for the comfort of our families and we join together with Auntie Bernice who remembers those that are still grieving the loss and are mourning the loss of their loved ones. We lift up these families that are part of us and part of our community and part of our families to you. 
Lord, please be to them their comfort and their guide. Lord, may they know the compassion and love of God in their, uh, in their families and in their home situations and where they have the sense of loss. We pray, Lord, that you will come and be close and they will know that you are with them. Lord, we also are reminded as we join together with Danny and our community, we reminded that of the social evils of hunger, unemployment, and poverty. Lord, may we, through our connection with people uh, in our small influences that we have, may we be able to help and be a part of helping. But Lord, we are mindful also to pray for our country and our leaders in business, in government, in church, in NGOs across the country, that you will bring to them, Lord, insights and bring the Lord along courageous followers as well that will hold leaders accountable so that we can, in some way, Lord, unwork poverty, hunger, and do new innovations and be a part of entrepreneurship that will create employment and social innovations in our country. Oh, Lord of mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, this morning we continue to remember our <clears throat> families and communities and our dear friends who have had to say goodbye to their loved ones. Uh, we remember Uncle um, Barney's dear family two months today since his passing. Um, we pray for this dear Augustine family, Lord, and pray that you would continue to be with them. Lord, we pray for families in our community that have, in our church community, who have lost loved ones, Lord. We pray for the Raoji family, Lord Jesus. We pray that you'd continue to be with them. We pray for Uncle Ganesha's family, Lord. Uh, continue to comfort and strengthen them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray uh, for many others, Lord, who continue to face this grief and this mourning um, each day. And how difficult is it at times, Lord, but that you would give them strength, that you would bring comfort, Holy Spirit, that you would embrace them. We ask this in your holy and precious name, Lord. O oh Lord of mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, we bring to you this morning um, the Carlsa family. And we pray that you will come alongside them. We don't know all of their needs, but right now, Lord, we uplift this family to you and we join together with Yasmin and Nuts and ask you for your blessing and your mercy to be with them. Lord Jesus, we are mindful of Ashria and Jashal and Kieran. Um, their dad who has passed away, we ask you, Lord, that you will come alongside these children, come alongside this family and uplift them at this time. And may they have a community of people that will come alongside and help them carry the burdens. Lord Jesus, please anchor with them. We wanna also thank you for the praises uh, lifted up by Auntie Savvy and uh, the prayers of thanksgiving, uh, of just being grateful for a community that prays. So we thank you, Lord, that you hear and answer these prayers and that you've come alongside Auntie Savvy through the prayers of other people. Lord, we also join together with Danny and family, and we are mindful of the violences that happen to people that are in vulnerable communities, more especially the aged, women and children, all types of violence and physical, even sexual, mental and emotional violence. Lord, we ask that our communities will be communities of love and communities of care, and may we become instruments of that love and care. Oh, Lord of mercy. Yeah, our prayers. <clears throat> Lord, so we thank you today that as Marisha and I have joined together with people that have stated prayers, we, we turn to you and thank you that prayer is this, this language that we have with you. Um, while, while there's so much that we wish for change in the world around us, in the circumstances in which we live, Lord, I am mindful today that prayer leads us to a reflective space of us communing with you and you communicating to us. We ask, oh Lord, that you speak to us um, in these ways and build inside of us an understanding, a faith, a grounding that helps us face the storms of our everyday life. 
we also lift you up and give you praise. We give you praise for families that have experienced the birth of a baby, even in COVID-19. We give you praise for protection over loved ones when matters could have turned out worse. We give you praise, Lord, for even this week of compassion services that can come across and alongside families that are in difficult moments. Mm -hmm. And like our leaders in our church have reminded us, Lord, that we together are a community of love and care and compassion. So we give you praise that we can put this into practice. Mm -hmm. Lord, we give you praise for resources. We give you praise that we can reach out and become your hands and feet in this our everyday world. We give you praise for the little things and the big things. We give you praise, Lord, for food on our table, for the love and care of family, for a, for a bed in which to sleep, for the blankets that we have. Lord, I join together with one of our sisters in our community and even give you praise for answered prayer when pajamas came through a gift. So Lord, for, for the requests that we have, for the burdens that we have, for the praises that we have, we bring them all to the foot of the cross and ask you, Jesus, to lift us up and allow us to see our world in a new way because of faith, hope, and love. O oh Lord of mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining in. I hope that that was a meaningful time to step away from whatever it is that we were thinking. And, and I encourage you to continue. May we be known as a community of prayer, a community of compassion, a community that knows the spiritual discipline of stepping away from the noise to reflect uh, and to journey on in, in, uh, in faith. At this time, we'll hand back to Jonathan. Uh, and as we do, uh, join in in worship. Yes, Jonathan can't hear you. You can hear him. Uh, but wherever you're at, sing along in your lounge, sing along at your home, and let this worship also prime and prep us as we move towards the word of God. Over to you, John. Thank you, Seth and Marisha. Uh, as we get into a time of worship, we're going to sing a song, a worship song called Open Our Eyes, Lord. First, open our eyes. As we sing the song, let's ask God to, uh, let's quiet ourselves down now, put away all distractions, if there are any things distracting us, and let's really take this time to ask God to open the eyes of our heart and for us to see more clearly and just um, invite him in. We know he, he does reside with us, but sometimes the distractions of the world just come in and um, drown out God's voice a bit in our hearts. And let us just invite him again and ask him to open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see Jesus as the words of the song says. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. See Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus to reach out and touch him. And say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord. And help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch Him. Say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us 
to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Seth and Marisha, over to you. 
Thank you, John, uh, for leading us so beautifully. Let us pray this morning as we enter this time uh, in reflection and uh, taking some time to reflect on the word of God together. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that we can be together in these next few minutes as we focus on your word. We pray, Lord, that your word will speak to us in our personal situations, in our family situations, and about life. Um, may your word speak truth, Lord. Take the reflections that I've had with you and you with me and turn it into community reflections where we all grow as people in Christ Jesus together. And everybody says, amen. So this morning, if you do have your Bibles with you, or if you don't, I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 6 to 8. Uh, and as you turn there, uh, let the overarching focus move in your mind about the topic of love. In the next few weeks, we want to deepen our journey of people who are loved by the Savior uh, and people who are called to love. Um, some bit of these reflections started as we came out of our series on uh, in August with a, a focus on, on uh, just being people that are connected to God, but more especially to the focus of having gender equality. But as we draw into this time of September and in this next few weeks as spring comes, let us journey into the space of, of thinking about love. And it started out for me with a quote by Oscar Romero, uh, and this is his quote. And Oscar Romero, in his service of the, of the church in, uh, in Latin America, uh, unfortunately found, uh, or, or the reality of him being assassinated took place because the word that he preached became such a, a radical word to the powers that be that his life was taken. But Father Oscar Romero uh, in the service of the church says the following, let us not tire of preaching love. It is the force that will overcome the world. Let us not tire of preaching love. Though we see the waves of violence succeed in drowning the fire of Christian love, love must win. Love must win out. It is the only thing that can. Let us not tire of preaching love. And with that in mind this morning, we're going to read from 1 Corinthians. And I would like to entitle this message in the series that will be unfolding through September into midway of, of October. Let us not tire of preaching, practicing, and purposefully propelling love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 6 to 8. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love is eternal. They are inspired messages, but they are temporary. They are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. May God bless the reading of this word. And a final reading there would be, love is eternal. Now, I took a summarized reading of 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 and 6. And those of you that would read it on, you could, you could see this, this text filled with this, this understanding of a pastor or an apostle speaking to the church that was in the city of Corinth. And what can we learn from it? Well, many of you have heard this text before, and it's a well-known scripture. We've heard it in these places. We've heard it around funerals, because at funerals, you may have heard people talking about love. We may have also heard it around weddings. Interestingly, the same text can be utilized in different spaces. We may have even heard it around, you know, compassion services or uh, services where people were reflecting on the quality of love or the context of love or how we practice love. But for Paul, it's, it's driven in this, in, this, in this way of agape. And in that way, it has a singular meaning, which is defined as putting the needs of others ahead of oneself. 
It was at the heart of the Christian experience. It shaped the Christian's understanding of God's own character. And it was the chief expression one Christian would use toward a fellow believer and the world. This expression of agape, this expression, expression of love where your needs are before mine. So, so in a way, yes, we can, we can draw out of the reflections of Paul and possibly uh, adapt it and, and understand this love message in, by way of love that is between uh, you know, uh, uh, a husband and a wife. It can also be love that we, that we uh, draw out of Paul speaking to a church in, in the context of a family losing a loved one. Yes, we can. But for Paul, it was really this practice of us being a community of faith and the people of Corinth being a community of faith that would put the needs of others before themselves. And so as we think about not tiring of preaching, practicing, and purposely propelling love, may we be mindful of the following. One, God is coming to our rescue. This love connection of God's love for us is that God is coming to our rescue. This is a proclamation of, of, the, of the prophet Isaiah, and you can read it in Isaiah 35, where through the readings of our, of, of our, of our church, not just the Christi Community Church, but the Uniting Reform Church and the church around the world, these readings from the prophets would give us this guidance to say to us, or, or guidance to say to us and lead us in this path that would say, God is coming to our rescue. And out of Isaiah, you hear it read in this way. Tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong and don't be afraid. God is coming to your rescue. It's a, it's a moving proclamation, uh, kind of like a, like a chuk-chuk train on the way. God is coming to your rescue. This rescuer God is present and with us. And out of Isaiah, we can declare that when I think about preaching, practicing love, propelling this love purposefully to others, I am one that must receive the declaration that God is coming to my rescue. And I am also one that must proclaim that declaration that God is coming to the rescue of others, that I love, that I care for, that I see this God who loves us is our God who is bringing help, is on the way. When you are centered in faith today, whatever the circumstance might be, whether it be a good circumstance or bad circumstance, a circumstance where you've lost people or a circumstance where you've seen or are witnessing people that, that have been sick, but they are coming back to good health. Be mindful today that we are those that will declare our rescuer God is coming. God is coming to our rescue. Help is on the way. This God that loves us out of the Isaiah prophetic declaration, God is coming to our rescue. Secondly, when we think about preaching and practicing and propelling uh, this, this love, purposefully propelling the love of God, the love that is patient and kind, where we put others before ourselves, James, as a servant of the Lord, would remind us as follows, that we must be aware of our bias and prejudice. As people of love, who are loved by the Savior and called to love others and put others before ourselves, we must carry with us a continued understanding of being aware of our bias and our prejudice. You would hear this in James being read in this way. In James 2, my friends, as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, you must never treat people in different ways according to their outward appearance. I don't know about you, but I hope that there'll be just a, a few more people than just myself, but that will be willing to declare that sometimes we see people and we measure them by their aesthetic appearance, their outward appearance. What is happening on the outside? How are they dressed? How do they look? And in those few moments, because we are in a society that somehow by its socialized bias and prejudice, we've inherited a culture 
unfortunately, that must be counter-cultural, counter, uh, countered with us thinking through that if I'm a person who's embraced love and I'm loving others, I become unusually aware of bias and prejudice in my society. So according to James and those who are loved of God and are called to love others, we become those who are people that will be in a room and looking out for the well-being of all. As believers in Christ Jesus, we are called to preach and practice and purposefully propel the love of God with a focus on fairness, on justice, on equality, on equitability. You know, some people are critically analyzing today and they're saying, oh, we talk about equality, but, um, but where is that equality? Because sometimes we find that some people are more equal than others. So you're gonna even have to further interrogate what is equality? Is there an equitability of our sharing? Are we sharing the resources equally? Or we just talk about it? So there's a focus on us practicing what we preach. Lastly, this morning, as we refute and we stay away from being tired of preaching love, practicing love, and purposefully propelling love, there's a groan of the Savior. Jesus groans with us. And there's evidence of this groaning in the gospel of Mark, Mark 7, 31 to 37. I'm not going to read the whole text, but I'm going to highlight the words of the groaning of Jesus. Think about it, a groaning kind of love, a lamenting kind of love. We've been speaking a lot about lament all the way from the first week of May, right through even just two weeks ago, families have lost loved ones in our church, in our community in our place and space. I remember uh, uh, Pastor Clippies having a one-to-one -one check in with me around about June and saying, Seth, it was amazing that, that we saw and, and, and dived more deeply into the understanding of lament. So when you think about love, the love of God and not tiring of preaching and practicing love, the savior loves us in a groaning, lamenting kind of way a groaning lamenting and tough love to anchor down in the storms of life jesus is our strength when all our strength is gone this is out of mark 7 and this is what it reads in a time when people brought a man who was deaf and could hardly speak they begged jesus to place his hands on him jesus took upon took him off alone away from the crowd, put his fingers in the man's ears, spat and touched the man's tongue. Now, for some of us, that might be too, man, too intimate. You know, Jesus taking me away off to the side and, you know, spitting into his hands and putting his fingers into the man's ear and touching the man's tongue. But this is what the gospel writer documents for us after this kind of intimate action of Jesus. The gospel writer declares, then Jesus looked up to heaven, gave a deep groan. Now, I don't know how the groan sounded, but I, when I've been in a difficult kind of space, I find myself maybe rocking forward and back when I'm not understanding. I don't know how you might find, but when you're wanting something to take place, I'll find myself in this kind of a rhythm. Marisha sometimes has to remind me, Seth, where you at? Come back out of where, what, what you're up to when, you, when you're in that rock. But, but when I'm feeling things and I can't talk about it, I can't find the lingo, I can't find the vocabulary, I find myself in a groan, in a groan. Mm, I don't know what groan Jesus made. But when people are perplexed, don't know where to turn, when we are feeling like, like we lost, there's a groan. And Jesus groans. And the gospel writer says, and he said to the man, Ephatha which means open up. And in this Mark's gospel, at once the man was able to hear, his speech impediment was removed and he began to talk without any trouble. This love of being loved by the savior reminds me that while I don't understand everything and I might not be able to rationalize everything, my faith calls me to this journey of belief that God can turn the tide. Now, sometimes it doesn't happen, but still I linger on where God can interrupt and come into my situation and bring around an opening up. 
a groaning Jesus who loves us. A tough love to anchor down in the storms of life. An interesting thing about the Corinthian church was that they were, in the same way that we'd speak in, in South African context of those children born in 1994 or 1995, and we'll talk about them as born frees, some of the Corinthian church were being liberated from, from, from actually service of the Roman Empire. And for the first time, these Gentiles were able to do what they could. After they had invested in, in serving Rome and serving the empire, in Corinth, there was this new beginnings. And in some way, in some of our context right now, while unemployment in our country is at an all high of 33% and amongst youth 60%, there's a need for new beginnings, kind of an entrepreneurial thought and innovation. Paul was speaking in the context of a church like this. I'd like us to read even in that way, that if Jesus is able to look up to the heavens and create the miraculous, even in an economic situation where uh, the world will tell us that we are, we are having a tough time economically, I'm going to believe, God, you can open up situations. God, you can bring resource in this time. Ephatha, open up, Lord. Lord, where people uh, are, are crying out to you for healing, bring healing, Jesus. Open up, turn the tide. It may not always turn out the way that we like, but faith calls us also to believe. And then also faith reminds us to think about this love we am loved by the Savior that even if it doesn't go as well, God will give me mercy and grace to face these times. But in that time, God will open up other avenues. Even through my pain, when Jesus laments, Jesus groans and calls out, Ephatha, something is going to happen. And that happening, I believe, and as I'll declare in faith to us today, is a happening where God will give us grace to face the, the things that we groan about. The things that make us groan, where we feel weak, we feel lost, we don't know where to turn. But if Jesus is groaning with me, and I'm, I'm groaning in a faith way with God, and as a person who's loved, I can preach this, this love, I can practice this love, I can purposefully propel this love of God in my everyday world. We're deepening this understanding of not growing weary of love. Like Romero said, don't tire of preaching love. I want some love in the morning. I want some love in the afternoon. Bring me some love of God in the evening uh, time too. Love for the moment, love in our families, love of God in our relationships, in our workplace. A love where God is our rescuer. My help is in you, oh God. A love where we are mindful not to be biased and prejudiced where others' needs become before ours, a love that reminds us that God is opening up the atmosphere and we'll make it through the storm. As I close this morning, some well-written words by Mary Ann Wilson, receive it in this way of thinking about others, the needs of others instead of myself, deepening our understanding of this faith-inspired kind of love, this God-centered love. Mary Ann Wilson, in her reflections of principles in a cause of miracles, but also a return to love, a return to love. Some of these words I'm about to read, people have stated that it was Nelson Mandela's words, but actually it was Mary Ann Williamson's words. Let me read. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing, nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically 
liberates others. Dear friends, as we receive that and we come to close, may this love of God become a love to us where we do not become tired of speaking that love or preaching it, of practicing that love and, and bringing it in, in the doing part of our faith and propelling this love everywhere we go. That hopefully as I become more conscious that I am more, that I am loved by the savior, I'm able to go into different places in my workplace, in my university space, in my place of entrepreneurship, in my place at, at primary school or high school, in my place with my family, in my place with my loved ones and be their presence with love. And as I'm aware that I am loved, so do others become more aware that they are loved and they too shine. We become liberated from our fears and we together shine. What shine? That love glow of God kind of shine. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you this morning that we can take a moment to reflect on your word. We pray, Lord, that you would allow us to go into this week being reminded that we are loved. And may we not tire of preaching love, practicing love, and propelling purposefully this love. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless this word to our brothers and sisters, children and families. Let us go forward and be those that will preach, practice, and purposefully propel your love, O oh God. Amen. Over to you, Sankar. Um, good morning, church. Thank you, Pastor Seth, for that, for that message. Um, this morning, before I do the, the birthdays, just an announcement. Uh, we were supposed to do the distribution of the hampers last week, but uh, that's now been postponed until tomorrow. So those who are involved, please take note that we will be uh, doing the distribution tomorrow from the church. Uh, birthdays for the coming week. September seems to be, or this week in September seems to be quite popular, and especially today, the 5th of um, September, we actually have three birthdays. Um, Oitomelo Makoko celebrates his birthday on the 5th, Nakita Ramsarok on the 5th, Vian Ramsawak, that's, that's his grandson, on the 5th, um, Shalim Dayanen celebrates her birthday on the 7th, and uh, I celebrate my birthday on the 8th. Uh, those are the birthdays that we have for the coming week. Uh, if your name has not been called out, uh, we want to wish you a, a wonderful day. And the verse that's been chosen comes from Psalm 34, verse 8. Uh, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Thank you, uh, sisters and brothers, for joining us this morning. We're now going to hand over to Jonathan for our closing song and then uh, to pass the set for the for the benediction. So Jonathan, over to you. Thank you, Uncle Sanka. Thank you, uh, Seth, Pastor Seth, for that beautiful message, reminding us um, about this God that we serve, that is a God essentially of love, and is completely relatable because. We as uh, people, uh, we, we know these emotions, we know what it means to love and God has created us. Therefore, that's why we know these emotions and well, not just emotions, but uh, the, the action of love. Um, and so we thank you for that message. The song we're gonna sing today is called What a Friend I Found. And it's about God who is a friend to us. And as we know, friends um, friends love one another. What a friend I found Closer than a brother I have felt your touch
Thank you, John. Jesus, our great friend and our lover of our souls. Let us uh, close our service with this benediction adapted from Mother Teresa. Dear Jesus, help us to spread our fragrance everywhere we go. Flood our souls with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess our whole being so utterly that our lives may only be a radiance of yours. O oh God, lead us into this week with your peace and your overwhelming sense that we are loved by our Savior. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all say, Amen. 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 Thank you for joining the service online. We pray that you have an awesome week, an awesome Sunday with your family. And as you get into this next week, God bless you. Join us on Wednesday with our focus on prayer. As Sankar said, on Monday, uh, the food hampers are going out. And a reminder, we have COVID-19 support through two machines that are oxygenators, as well as some oximeters. If you need help, please reach out uh, and we are available to help you. Take care and God bless.